Hey there, Blockhead Traders. Here at Blockhead Traders, I must inform you that we are not financial professionals. Nothing we say should be considered financial advice. We offer our own thoughts and opinions to you, the viewer. We expect you to take these opinions, form your own financial conclusions, and make your own financial decisions. Today is Friday, October 20th, 2023, and this is Blockhead Traders Weekly. In this week's episode, it is a special day because I actually am not at my day job today. So that means the market is actually open and I postponed the recording this week to actually do it during market open. And this is an expiration Friday. Uh, so some of my options are actually expiring. And so I thought I would go ahead during a live session uh, to kind of tend to some of my positions and just kind of talk through some of the things that I've got going on. So, you know, some of the stuff that might make it in this video are kind of rolling some options that are expiring. Um, I had an interesting screening through VMware and I wanted to talk through some of the observations that I had with that. Um, there's also a couple of scalping that I tend to try to do pre-market and I might try to do some of that, uh, live on here, or at least just talk through some of it, uh, because I've got them going on in the background. So this is really just kind of an informal episode of, of really just what I'm kind of looking at, um, during the days. Um, well, not really during the days, but, but the type of mechanics that I'm looking at to plan for an entry and exit, it just so happens that this time I can do a lot of it with the market live. So, uh, this should be kind of interesting. So hope you enjoy. Before we hop to that content, I want to give a shout out to our Discord, a link in the description below. You can click there, say hello to Viper, myself, uh, some of the other blockhead traders love to hear what you're trading, love to hear what type of content you want to hear about. You'll also find a link to thetagang.com forward slash sprocket888, where I post each and every one of my equity trades, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Lastly, you can grab this episode wherever you get your podcasts in an audio-only format. Go ahead and look us up, Blockhead Traders, and if you can't find us where you get your podcasts, let us know and we will get it there. So let's go ahead and hop into the first thing that's actually going on right now for me. Um, I actually have a scalp kind of going on uh, MCL, which is a micro future in uh, oil. And it actually just flipped position just a bit ago. Um, and so I thought I'd let you kind of see what I'm looking at um, to decide what's going on here. Uh, I'm not doing super well in this today. I just started this. Um, I kind of noticed this big downswing here. Um, and I thought, hey, you know what? I've been kind of long oil contracts. Um, this is kind of in a no man's land. Uh, at least at the moment, it was kind of maybe trying to figure out which direction we were heading in today. And so I decided to try to position along. And so I backed up in, in some of the chart mechanisms. Um, and I saw around this kind of 80, 52 mark um, where I thought that there was a potential for uh, maybe a reversal to kind of continue a continuation trend upward. Um, and so I went ahead and I positioned a long of three contracts there. Uh, it actually filled just a few minutes ago. And so I thought I'd kind of hop over here to just explain a little bit what I'm looking at and where I might put my stop orders in uh, and where I might kind of take some price targets. And so the first thing I want to mention is, is I'm not very good at scalping. Um, or you could say I'm perfect at scalping because my odds when I try to scalp futures are about 50-50. Uh, and I guess when you're trying to, uh, when I say 50-50, I mean about, you know, 50% loss um, on my PL and 50% gain. So most of the time I come up kind of a wash. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get the direction kind of correct. Um, and then it'll it'll kind of tilt a little bit more in my favor. But I feel, feel my wins and losses are, are really close to 50-50. And so... Uh, one of the things I've been experimenting with and um, is is this type of chart that you see right here. And it looks a little bit weird because you'll notice there's all these, you know, reds all in one direction, greens all in another direction. Um, and it's not your typical candle chart. Uh, so you can go actually way back in a previous episode and, and we kind of talked about these things. They're called Renko blocks. Um, and basically each block is a particular number of ticks that um, the... Uh, chart basically contains. And so my Renko blocks are set to two ticks. So every time if I zoom in here real quick, um, each one of these blocks uh, represents two tenths of a point uh, in this oil. So uh, this is where it's gone up two tenths. Then here we went down two tenths, down two tenths, down two tenths. And so that's why the, the reds are uh, descending ticks and the greens are ascending ticks. Um, 
I tend to think that this helps me filter out some noise, um, although I, I'm kind of on the fence on what it actually does. Um, this other clouds that I have going on here are kind of Ichimoku indicators. Um, they sort of give you an underlying uh, trend, whether or not it's in a short-term trend is bullish or bearish. Um, and so a lot of times where I'm going to position trades are uh, I'm going to position bullish trades uh, above this yellow cloud and I will short the, the stock when it's below the red cloud. Um, and then what I'll, I'll typically also use, um, and you can't see it on this screen that I have up here right now, but I'll also have uh, regular candle charts uh, kind of going as well, uh, looking for where there is potential uh, price action levels. Um, and so I, I try to spot some of those price action levels there uh, and, then, and then decide where uh, to maybe position stops and things like that. Um, so right now, actually, things are not going so well for me. Um, we're starting to kind of breach down here uh, in almost kind of going through that, that bullish cloud. Um, so this is, is potentially not that good of a sign. Um, where I will probably, oh, sorry, I'll actually set it here real soon because I don't, when these things start to run, um, they can kind of run away from you. These are future contracts, so they're a little bit larger. Um, so now that we're kind of going against here pretty strong, I want to decide where I want to put a stop. Okay, so I've done a quick kind of check on where I might want the stop um, to kind of flip uh, to reversal here. So you can see uh, kind of negative 29. We look like we're falling here a little bit. I set the stop um, basically around the $89 mark. And, and where I kind of got that from is if I switch here and you can kind of look um, at the daily uh, chart. I see, sorry, not daily. This is a 15-minute candle chart. Um, of of the action basically from the opening of the futures today. Um, and you can see that there's this kind of cluster here where, where we started swinging up from here and uh, basically losing the bottom uh, of this cluster here uh, is really what I wanted to see, you know, hey, about where is that? It looks like it's about, you know, 89 uh, bottoms, these wicks or maybe 88, 91. And uh, so this, if we kind of breach this to me, that might be the sign of a potential reversal. Um, and so that's where I decided to put in uh, that stop out. And so if you kind of come back here, I'm actually only long one um, MCL share. Uh, normally I trade these in, in quantities of three. Uh, so I think when I first set my first entry, it, it was not three. Um, so actually if I, I short two here, it basically closes out that first long and then takes a long short. Um, I think I'm going to actually switch this to um, four. Uh, because I typically like to change in batches of uh, three for there. So the four will close out the one long, um, and then it will go ahead and uh, flip to the short three shares. So I'm going to close that two stop. Uh, I'm going to click in here to put that four uh, short. Uh, so then if we kind of end up breaching this strike, uh, it'll flip to a short position of three futures of MCL. Um, and then, you know, typically what happens is as soon as that fills, um, we go the other way. Uh, so maybe I don't have this set uh, most beautifully or not, but this is roughly what I'm kind of doing when I'm looking for these, these scalps on oil. And what I've tried to do, uh, typically I do this before market opens, um, and I'll, I'll just set a position for the day. So I'll kind of see what direction is it going. I will take an entry, uh, bullish or bearish, usually before open, uh, and then I'll pick a stop, uh, and I'll and I'll set all that actually before the actual market opens. So futures trade uh, basically almost all the time, 24 hours a day essentially. And so what I'll do is I'll set that uh, entry. I'll get into it, um, and then I'll pick the short stop out or or long stop out, whichever direction I'm going, and it'll go for the day. And what I've seen a lot of times is at market open, I can sometimes get stopped out with some thrashing around. Uh, but lately, if I get that direction kind of correct, um, it'll carry on in that direction all day. Uh, and then usually by the end of the day, I can come in, close it out. Uh, I might keep tabs on it, you know, lunchtime, things like that, uh, to just grab a couple couple profits there. And so I've been relatively successful with oil, uh, particularly with all of the volatility, given what's going on in the Middle East. Um, yesterday, for example, I got the bullish direction correct when I set all the stuff. And at the end of the day, I went back in and closed that oil position out. Uh, three contracts of MCL and was able to pull in about $900 uh, on that swing trade for the day. 
So most of my stops, I try to keep, you know, relatively close to where the swings, the most recent swings on like a 15 minute or something came from. Um, so the, the stops are not usually that far. Uh, so my losses when I, when I take a loss because I get stopped out are usually in the realm of, of maybe 50 to a hundred dollars. And so I, I guess as long as I tilt the stuff good enough, then, Hey, you know, maybe it'll work out in the end. So here's something to share with you guys. Um, you're not really going to probably be able to read this very well because this is on a 5K monitor, um, and this is the whole 5K monitor. Um, I have a secondary monitor off to the side where I keep um, maybe a chat. My Discord is over there. Um, also keep a couple of live stream of uh, some market news feeds, not 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 data feeds, but basically coverage like CNBC, stuff like that. Um, if I'm picking that stuff up for market hours, but, but largely this is the layout that I work off of. Um, you know, I'll just take you through some of it to this far right. This is where my screener is. Um, when I've been looking for some of earnings plays and stuff like that, I would go ahead and, and load a particular uh, screener in here for potentials. Um, I'd scan. I have uh, some of my hotkeys uh, and stuff set up, uh, hot actions, I guess you could say, so that when uh, values come up here is something to look at. I might say, oh, look, here is um, Southwest Airlines, and I'd go ahead and send it. Um, that's going to send Southwest Airlines uh, over to these other screens, this one in the middle top, um, this is the option chain window uh, about where the current option pricings are. Uh, this is if I want to take a play, I'd kind of come in here and plot one out. You can see I've, I've been kind of looking at um, Southwest. They have earnings next week. Um, this is a potential earnings trade that I will uh, be looking at playing. I'm really on the fence about it, but one of the things that influences it then is over here to the far left, um, I have two charts that I lay out. Uh, typically, this top chart is set to a 15-minute chart just to look at the, the closer price action. Um, when I'm looking at option plays, I, I focus more on this lower chart, uh, which is the daily, and then I also have this indicator of implied volatility that I added down here. Uh, and the reason Southwest is so appealing uh, is for a volatility crush because you can see this volatility has been creeping up. I know you won't be able to see like super in detail, uh, but you'll see this red go to green and the green to get higher and higher. Um, so this is what what piques my my curiosity here. And so this is pretty much how I will quickly scan these. I'll, I'll just kind of come down to one. Here's Hershey Company. Um, and I'll, I'll really just look at this IV. Where is this IV at? What's the trend in the price? Um, you know, where, where does it stand? So here, Hershey, um, yeah, it's in a downtrend, but we're starting to kind of bottom a little bit. Volatility is very high. They have earnings coming up next week. Uh, so then I would come over here into the middle window, uh, and then I'd say, okay, well, what's the week of earnings? Week of earnings is next week. Um, it's only a 38% spot volatility, not so great or crazy, but I might see what's a 20 delta strangle looking like here. And so this will be, probably be really hard for you to see, uh, but 16, 20 Delta Strangle, collect uh, 220 uh, with the buying power of 3,200. So probably not going to take this at all. Uh, but this is basically largely what I look at here. Um, and then this lower middle uh, is my Theta Gang uh, tracking. So right here in, in the Theta Gang, uh, when I make a trade, I go ahead and I enter that trade uh, into my Theta Gang uh, profile. Uh, so other people that, that tend to want to watch it or track it uh, are there. And so that's, this is largely my, my workspace um, for most of my trades. Um, and when I'm actually doing the scalping uh, that you saw earlier, I end up switching uh, this mainstream over here to whatever things I typically try to scalp. So if I switch back to uh, the scalp on oil, uh, you can see I'm uh, shorting oil and not doing too well. It's kind of teetering along. Um, but basically this top one is my, my Renko block chart. Uh, this bottom one is a Heiken Ashy chart. Um, and so what I'm kind of looking here, if I just pause for a minute to talk about oil, um, this purple line is a, is a volume weighted uh, average price for the day or VWAP. And so a lot of times that VWAP becomes like a resistance level. Um, and then the cool thing is these crosshairs, uh, no matter what, what graph I'm on show like where they are. And you can see right here um, where we kind of started getting a little bit of a rejection here on 89.31. That is almost exactly at that purple VWAP level uh, right here. And so um, I'm not really going to take a stop out on this short, probably until we breach up here at like the 89.60 level, maybe a little bit above it. Um, so, 
you know, if you look at where those crosshairs kind of go on both, yeah, it's, it's really zoomed out, but that's going to be close to the high uh, for the day. So, you know, this is the screen that I look at there. And then, you know, this can also flip over, not from a screener, but to the actual portfolio on what positions do I have? When, when do they expire? I group them by expiration. I put all my bonds together. These are the uh, treasury bonds that I go with the four week uh, treasuries. All right. So the other thing I got going on today, um, this one is a, a stinker of a trade. Um, it is a uh, short put that I have on the Russell uh, index uh, future. So I'm actually short the 1800 put uh, on the Russell. And so you can see right here is is my PNL. Um, actually, that is with the roll. So this is my current PNL. Um, now this is this is the PNL as this trade stands. Um, I have been pretty successful shorting uh, the Russell on the way down. Uh, once we started breaching my 1800 strike, um, there was many days where I went in and I put in some shorts on the Russell as it continued to fall and I would profit from those shorts uh, while keeping this trade open. Um, just trying to kind of keep this thing alive. Um, the reason I could do that is because it doesn't actually take any more buying power uh, to short uh, the Russell as it kind of goes down, uh, because once you breach your strike, remember that option contract that I sold gives the the buyer of that option, which is not me, I'm the seller, the buyer of that option to force me to purchase the Russell at $1,800 uh, or, or that $1,800 strike. And when I do that, I'm then long the, the Russell. And so once you breach that strike, uh, when it comes to calculating your margin, it says, okay, well, you're below the strike, um, so you actually have this. So it's it's effectively a cash-secured short, or, or sorry, a um, it's, a, it's an equity secured short. So because we're below the strike, I effectively have a long uh, contract of the Russell. And so when I put that short on, I don't have to put up any margin or capital for that short uh, because I'm already assigned that short. Not, not really assigned, but, but um, if it was at expiration, I would be assigned. Um, so I'm not forced to kind of pony up any particular margin or buying power. So what that kind of allows me to do is try to catch those downswings um, on the Russell uh, to grab some some profit to, to cushion the loss that I'm taking should the Russell stay down below there. And I did that kind of hoping that um, over time that we would kind of recover. I, I had a thesis that that maybe we would hold around um, the 1750, 1730 mark. Um, and then we would kind of kind of rebound back up. Um, that actually has not been the case. In fact, if I switch over here to the daily chart, where I'm kind of looking at the, the price action of this, these are all daily candles. Um, I can't remember exactly when I opened it. I feel I opened it around this, this swing up here of 1920. Um, sorry, it would have been the, the swing down as we were picking up volatility. Um, so as we were dropping on these big candles here, um, that's when I kind of opened it saying, hey, look, I bet you we're going to get caught here uh, because at the time there was a, the swing up here, which was kind of originating around this 1850. And I thought, okay, well, if we come down to 1800, I've got another potential catch uh, down here at 1750 or so. And, and so, you know, the, the probability appeared to be in my favor. And so I opened the trade. Um, we basically breached 1800 down here, uh, which was around the beginning of October. Uh, and then I, we kind of made a beautiful run back up. So I was pretty deep in the money here at 1750. We made kind of a run back up and each of these legs down, this is where I was shorting the Russell, uh, against that secured, uh, uh, futures contract that I had. And so, uh, the, the level that I was really hoping to hold here was the 1730 or so. Um, if I, if I zoomed back out a little bit more there, there's kind of another like 1700 level that maybe, and, and so far today we're now breaching that. Um, and I was really hoping, uh, prior to today to get a challenge back up to 1800. Don't have to make it there, uh, because my future, uh, option expires today. So I have to do something with it today. Otherwise, at the end of today, I will be assigned one futures contract of Russell. Um, and to be honest, I just don't want that yet. Uh, so I am plan to roll it. So this is an October expiration. I would roll it to November expiration. Uh, the actual future itself does not expire till the end of December. Um, but 
because I I basically am am selling and rolling deep into the money, uh, there's not much extrinsic value in the November option that I would sell uh, to kind of cover this. And so if I could even get a rally up on the Russell to 1750 even, there's almost there's zero premium basically left in the option uh, that expires today. So the only price that I'm going to pay to close is the in the money price. And so if I can get a rally, then then that in the money price is less. That allows me to buy that back for less. Now it's a wash because when I go to sell November, I'm going to turn around and basically uh, sell back that loss that I took because. You know, the, the November will be in the money by the same distance. And so because I'm buying uh, or sorry, selling, buying back the in the money of my current option, okay, it's costing me uh, that in the money. But then I turn right around and I sell a November contract for that exact same in the money plus the extrinsic value of November. And so the smaller I can make that, the bigger the extrinsic value gets. So the problem is an 1800 strike for November expiration has almost no extrinsic value. Uh, and to, to kind of visualize what I'm saying, uh, let me switch back over to this option chain here. Um, and this is my PL chart. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this strangle that I was looking at. Um, so these are the two orders that will effectively help me roll it. This is buying back the um, $1,800 RTY put that I have today. And then the order below it is basically selling the 1800 November expiration. And the difference in price is, is basically the difference that I'm going to profit uh, or, or at least add to my potential winnings. Um, so to close it is going to be 105 uh, and then to sell the new one. So this 105 is is almost exactly what the intrinsic value, that's the in the money value. And so there's exactly 105 uh, intrinsic value in the November option. You can see there's some extrinsic value of like 250, but not really much of anything. And so if I simulate both of these on my PL, um, yes, my my this end result kind of comes up a little bit. My break even kind of comes down, but effectively this is 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 really just kind of a wash of a trade um and i i don't know if this is something i should i should you know cut bait on and and just wait um i feel no because you know i just want to kind of keep the dream alive um i do believe that we're actually going to come back to probably a 1900 level before kind of continuing down uh, eventually, the problem is we haven't turned yet, and so we're just going to kind of continue down. Um, so actually, earlier today, when we breached 1700, I, I took out another short on the RTY, um, and so presently uh, we're we're still falling below that 1700, and I, I'm picking up um, profit or we're picking up money as we go down because again, set secured on that uh, uh, anticipated assignment at 1800. So likely this is not going to get any better for me, um, especially since the the price just really seems to continue to deteriorate. Um, ideally, I probably should wait till the afternoon just to give it a chance because remember, kind of postponing this really isn't going to cause any risk to me. Um, yes, it's in the money, uh, but these options are what's known as European style options. So there is no early assignment. Um, and so I basically can roll this all the way up to the, to the end of the day. And so because I'm buying and selling uh, the same strike, that intrinsic money, it doesn't matter if I get deeper in the hole, that basically becomes a wash uh, because when I flip that, I'm basically going to sell back that same intrinsic value um, that I pay to close it out. So the only thing that it gets me, so there's no real like downside risk of, of, of losing more money if my intention is to roll. So because my intention is to roll, it it doesn't, there's really no downside risk to waiting to roll until later in the day. Um, the upside potential would be that if price can rebound throughout the day, then I can get back uh, a little bit more extrinsic value um, when I sell it. Now, we're only talking a couple of hours. I don't really know what's going to happen. It seems to be deteriorating, but I want to show you live uh, the roll. So we're going to go ahead and execute this live uh, here. And what we'll end up getting is about uh, five uh, points um, in, in new premium from this. And so unfortunately with futures, you can't bundle these transactions into one bang. Um, with equity options, you 100% can. So you can say, hey, I want to buy this and sell this in the same transaction 
Uh, and the brokerage will take it and it'll execute it and your role happens in one transaction. Now, effectively, a role is just buying back the current option and then selling the, the longer dated option. So you can do them in two separate transactions, which is effectively what I'm going to do here. Um, and so I'll right click my buy. I'll say, let's go ahead and duplicate this order. Uh, and then when I look at that, it's going to give me a mid and a natural price. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to get this. See, this is a really big spread because this is really far out of the money. Um, let's go ahead and unlock this thing. Uh, try to get closer to that mid price for buying back. Um, I don't know if we'll actually get this, but let's try it. Um, so I'm going to confirm and send... Uh, let's see if we can get that closed out. And pretty much if I don't get a fill immediately, I'm not getting a fill immediately. Um, I'll go ahead and edit this order. Uh, and I'm going to tick up. And you can't see this because it's in another window, but basically I'm just kind of increasing my uh, bid here of, of closure closer to the natural price. The natural price is the, the actual... Um, price that is out there on the offer. And what I'm trying to do is get closer and closer to put my offer out to see if someone will come down um, and nibble it. Uh, but so far that one didn't take. Uh, so we're just going to keep walking this up. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll walk it up another. That was 102. Um, I'm going to go ahead and walk it up uh, to 103. that filled. Okay. So now I'm out of that right now. And so I want to get back in. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and sell uh, this one. So I'm going to create a duplicate order. And then again, I'm going to try to get closer uh, to the mid price here. Um, and I got into that for 110. So, uh, basically, I did not too bad there. Um, I got in at, uh, got out, uh, closed out at 103, uh, and then I got back in at 110. And so you can see I pocketed more when you, you might say, oh, you got back in higher than you got out. And that's good, remember, because I'm selling the option. Um, so I basically got. I was able to roll that forward uh, for seven points. And in this particular case, um, those seven points is $350. And so I've, I've kind of kept this going, uh, pulling in another $750 uh, in premium. So what else do I have going on here today? Um, I've got this uh, Carvana option expiring today. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this Carvana. It's the only one that I have expiring on October 20th. Uh, so I keep a lot of my groups and stuff here um, as far as what's expiring when, so I can kind of keep track of it. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here at the Carvana uh, stock option. So we'll go over here to my P&L chart. Um, this one is actually in a position where we are out of the money. So if I let this thing expire, my strike is at $40. It's a call. This is a covered call. I actually have 100 shares of Carvana stock, um, and I sold a call against it, and I've been kind of selling a call against it. Uh, my current break-even on Carvana um, is down here around 2735 that I went ahead and marked. Uh, it's currently trading at 31 And so, you know, uh, selling another call is basically something I could do. Um, I can let this expire and I'll get my full premium for this uh, call that I have st stood out there. Um, this one could be early assigned, but uh, honestly, when you're out of the money, you you don't have any early assignment risk because there's no benefit uh, to taking that assignment when it's out of the money. And so what I've been kind of waiting here uh, is for the Carvana strike to get closer to that $40, $40 mark again. Um, because if I sell another covered call at 40, I'll collect more premium. Um, and then should I get assigned, I don't really care because then I would not only keep that premium, I would also get $40 a share for my 100 shares. Um, and so it's kind of a win-win. And so this Carvana, I'm really looking to get assigned um, and be able to get out of the Carvana stock so I can take this capital somewhere else.
Uh, Carvana was a particular stock that I sold naked puts on. Um, I got assigned, and as soon as I got assigned, um, I turned around and started selling calls against it, uh, looking for assignment to get out. And it's a way that I'm collecting that premium um, for effectively what's a limit order. Um, it's not quite a limit order because it doesn't really execute as soon as you breach that strike like a limit order would, but I'm not really that uh, impatient with it. I can kind of wait. Um, and even when you go in the money on these things, you can kind of still keep rolling your in the money options, collecting more and more premium, kind of forcing whoever holds that option um, to exercise early uh, if they want to assign you those shares. Um, and so I've been kind of hanging out, hoping that Carvana would rally back closer to 40 um, so I could sell another one with 40 and get more premium. Um, it just hasn't been that way. The the uh, uh, chart on there, if I switch over to the daily chart here, um, and I'll go ahead and switch this so you guys can see uh, the chart. So this is the daily chart on Carvana. We reached like 57. We've been kind of sliding. We're at 30 here. We're in kind of a downtrend. Um, you know, likely uh, looking at this daily, we, we probably are going to keep continuing down Um until uh, potentially around maybe this 25 mark or so, uh, where we might potentially slow down, maybe reverse. Um, basically, it's another level to test. Um, we we kind of lost this level a little bit ago, which was the 37 uh, level. Uh, this came back. It kind of held that level, uh, went back up, got rejected off of this 57, uh, and then kind of coming back down. Then we lost that level. Uh, so likely, we're kind of coming back down to the start of this swing um, right here. And so in, in this swing, you know, this swing started from around 25. Um, so it's very likely that this is going to drop back down to 25 before we do some other test and, and make a, a decision of where we're going. Uh, right now, it looks like a continuation of a downtrend. So what does that mean for me? Um, this means I've got a couple of options. Uh, one, I could do nothing uh, and let this expire. And then I just hold 100 shares of Carvana. Um, looking to do something with it at some point, you know, wait for it to rally up and then sell a call. Uh, the thing that I have is my whole play here on Carvana is I want to make money uh, holding these shares. And so if I'm just holding these shares, well, they are depreciating or declining in value. I'm not really making any money. My cost basis is around 27. Um, if I keep that $40 strike, uh, so this is kind of pushing out to November, you can see it's going to net me about a dollar sixty in premium. So that's another hundred and sixty dollars that I would pull in from that. But keep in mind we're at like thirty and we're declining down. And to me the price action is reading we're probably heading to twenty five. Uh, so if I look at the actual option chain here for November expiration, just to see what the deltas are. Um, you know the delta at that forty is about a twenty nine delta. So that's typically where I'm going to sell naked options is around the, the 20 to 30 delta mark if I'm doing a single-sided trade. Uh, so if I was betting that this stock was going to go down and I was selling out of the money, not looking for assignment, um, I would probably take uh, that $40 strike. Now, if I move up one strike to the $35 strike, um, I'm going to collect additional $100 in premium, but I'm going to give up the assignment of uh, $5 of assignment. So I'm giving up that 35 to 40. So for assignment, I'd give up $500. Uh, so I'm picking up another $100, but kind of giving up that 500 if I thought this stock was going to rally above 40 before expiration. Um, so this is the trade-off that's going in my head. Um, at this point, um, if I go down here and, and take a look um, on just kind of hypothesizing what that looks like right now, if I kept that 40, I'd collect $150 in premium. If I change this to a $35 strike, that's still pretty far out of the money, but this would take me up to collecting another $283. So uh, remember, my, my break even was around $27. Um, so if I took another 283 in premium, that would take me down to uh, below a $25 strike uh, in uh, my break even. And if I got a rally up to that $35 strike, I'm still going to pocket, you know, $35 a share uh, off of that premium that I had already collected from from that break even. Now I have a, a much longer accumulated. Um, so that's really the trade off that I'm trying to think about in my brain. Um, do I want to keep that $40 uh, strike 
Uh, it's it's possible we could get back there by the third week of November. Um, but we are in a current downtrend, and we did break um, that recent level of, of 37 that I kind of called out there where we, where we kind of started. So uh, in order to get back to 40, we would have to come back to that 37, break through the 37, and then start to gain again. Um, and we haven't really started reversing the downtrend yet. Um, and I will profit either way um, off of the 35 or the 40 strike. And, you know, as we get closer to that November expiration, you know, rolling again is, is also an option. Uh, so I think I'm going to actually go ahead and pull down or, or roll down my strike to a 35 call. Uh, because when I'm looking for assignment, I don't typically go to that, that 30 Delta. I typically try to go more to the 50 Delta. Um, I could come all the way into 30, uh, and then pick up, um, this, uh, premium because that's actually in the money. So I would start picking up some of the in the money premium. Um, and, and this really kind of goes to, okay, where do you, where do you think Carvana is really going to go to? Um, so let's just take a look at this because this would be more than a, a 50 Delta. Uh, so I'm going to pull in another $5, uh, in premium here, uh, total. So that would take my break even down to around $22. And then if I got assigned at, uh, $30. I'm basically going to pick up $800 of profit uh, in there uh, then uh, of from just the sale. And then that that's excluding some of the, the premium rolls and stuff I collected. All right. So I just went back and double checked how much premium I have collected so far on Carvana to really decide where I want this. Um, to be honest, it's in a downtrend. Uh, remember, Carvana was this stock that basically was on death's doorstep uh, from going bankrupt uh, just not that long ago. I kind of want out of this thing. I kind of don't want to hang on to it anymore. Um, I've collected so far $8.63 in premium uh, from the put side and then through the assignment um, and then through the calls that I sold. And so um, I was actually assigned at $30 itself. Uh, so if I dial down my call to the $30 strike, I'm exactly going to sell back exactly what I paid for these at $30, which means all the premium collected becomes my uh, profit on the trade. And so if I roll down to the $30 strike for November expiration, I'm going to collect about another $5 um, on top of the $8.63. That takes me to $13. Um, so that that brings my, my total profit potential there uh, if assigned at uh, $1,300. I think I'm going to take that uh, versus kind of giving up more uh, because we'll just see what kind of happens. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this to the 30. Now, unlike that future that I just said, you can see that this is in the same transaction. It's a diagonal, and we're looking at the uh, sell, buying back the 40 right now. Um, it doesn't give you the price for that. The, the fill will actually show you. I'll show you that in a minute. And then selling the 30 on the November expiration. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to create a duplicate order here of this. I'm going to try to get a better mid fill. So let's just take it and round it up directly to five. Uh, the mid price is $4.99. Uh, let's go see if we can get a fill at $5 for this roll. Um, we'll put it in. And I got a fill. Uh, so what was my actual fill here? Let's take a look. So what did I get on that? Um, actually, in looking at this, I, I realized that um, probably those numbers I just gave you were actually going to be higher for the premium because these are all the premiums I've collected uh, on Carvana uh, since selling calls. Notice every single one of these is calls. So that $8.63 uh, that was the summation of these actually does not include uh, the put side premium that I collected uh, on the way down before I was assigned. So... Uh, actually I probably will end up collecting more than that, uh, because that's not factored in, but right up here, you can see, uh, is my plus one to close. So this is buying back that $40 call, bought it back for a penny. Uh, and I was able to sell that $30 call for 501, netting me a net credit of $5. Remember this represents hundred shares. So that's 500. So if you add all these up, uh, we're basically looking at like 13 and some, uh, from that. And that does not include my Carvana, uh, put premium that I collected uh, in the other direction. So, you know, that is now rolled. Um, going back to what I've got going on now, that position has been rolled. I got nothing left for my October expirations. Uh, and gotten through my scalps that I did on, on oil. Um, 
to see to show you guys how I do that. Also rolled that RTY trade. Um, so that's about all the content that I have uh, to show you today in this kind of housekeeping session. So that brings us to the end uh, of this week's episode. Uh, I didn't touch on the VMware thing. Uh, I figure there's probably just enough uh, rambling on about myself uh, that touching on some of the VMware intricacies um, of that particular situation maybe are not worth it. It's something that popped up on my screener as a potential play, and then kind of looking into it, I realized that was not uh, maybe a great play to take uh, because there's kind of an upcoming merger going on. And uh, so anyway, I, I did skip over that content, even though you did hear about it in the intro. This is the type of stuff that I largely do, um, you know, in the evenings. Now, I'll look at a lot of these prices when they're not live, and I'll set those roles um, outside of market hours so they execute when the market opens. Um, I really try to push them uh, as long as I possibly can um, in the option world. Like I said, the only reason that the RTY and the Carvana went so close to expiration is because Carvana was well outside the money uh, and it was covered. So even if it went in the money, uh, it's fine by me because it's a covered call and I was actually looking for assignment. So whether or not that went in or out, um, going to the very last day is what I typically always do with those covered calls uh, because there's no real downside risk because getting assigned is my goal. Uh, and if I don't get assigned and I want to open up another one, I basically want to do it when there's no extrinsic value left. And as you can see, there was one penny of extrinsic value left uh, in that Carvana for the roll. Um, similar thing with the RTY because rolling was my intention, um, that in the money value, uh, intrinsic value I, is a wash because you yes, you are buying it back. And so that's expensive, but you're turning around and selling it right back. And so that really ends up being a wash. Um, and what you end up with, uh, is just the extrinsic value. And so holding on to it until the very last day. Um, there's no early assignment risk with futures options. That is not true for most every other option in equities. So be careful for early assignment uh, because if you are deep, deep in the money in an equity option like that, uh, you very likely will get assigned. Now, if that's your goal and you're okay with assignment, then then wonderful. There's no, no harm, no foul. Um, in the future world, uh, at least for the index futures, they're European style, so there is no such thing as early assignment. So I was safe to carry that thing all the way into ass uh, the assignment day. Um, I'm okay with that uh, because I was intending to roll if it was in the money. We were in the money. Pushing as late as possible uh, is my strategy there. I was hoping for a rally, but like I said, I wanted to put the orders in so you guys could see putting the orders in. Um, so I did roll it earlier in the day. Uh, we'll see what happens throughout the day if it actually turns around and we start gaining on the Russell. Uh, indications, price action indications and the Russell do not indicate that that would be the case. Again, the downside risk was really not much, um, and the upside potential was really not much that different if I waited just a couple of hours. Um, so I went ahead and rolled it and took care of that. And that's effectively, you know, what I do. Um, if it's uh, if the option is in the money, um, I will, might tend to take care of it if it's not covered. Um, I might tend to roll sooner um, because if there's an early assignment risk. Um, if I'm not looking for assignment, I might be taking care of things when they've hit 50% price targets, stuff like that. That's normally when I close out my options. Um, in the examples here, that was not my strategy. Um, the Carvana was one where I did take assignment and I want to get unassigned from it. Um, so that is the strategy there. So hopefully you guys found this somewhat uh, insightful. Hopefully you found that somewhat interesting. Uh, there's a lot of stuff always going on in the market. Uh, hopefully you find something that interests you, a way that you like to trade um, and to, to just to keep expanding your knowledge um, and digging into the things that interest you. Good luck out there. Um, there's a lot happening. And remember, don't forget, think outside the block.